Hi, I'm Garrett with IDC Woodcraft, and welcome to this video where we're going to take a brief discussion on router bits <laughs> and reach out to the community where you guys can have some input. So I got an email from Alan who bought a SandSmart CNC router, a little thing, and he got a handful of bits from them, and this is what he got. And he said for the life of him, being a newer, uh, new CNCer, he doesn't know what they're all for. So I'm going to discuss a little bit about what I know about these things and then put it out to the community for you to make a comment as to what some of these things are really intended for. So we're just going to take a little quick journey on router bits. First of all, you got all these bits. You've got 10 ball nose bits right here. I'm going to assume these are either 3 millimeter or 1 8 inch diameter. Uh, being a sand smart, I'm going to guess that it's probably all metric because it's a completely Chinese made machine. But that's just my best guess. So we're just going to say 3 millimeter, but uh, for you who doesn't know metrics, that's very close to 1 8, but it does not work for 1 8. That's a little bit smaller. So when you want to order bits, uh, if you're working in inches, make sure you uh, get inch bits. So these are ball nose, the ones up here. You've got 10 of them. I guess they plan on you breaking a lot of bits. One ball nose should last you for quite a while. This is going to do the rounded contours. What ball nose is good for is some carving of... of um, like some 3D type of carving. It'll make a 3D carve look okay, but it won't like give you a bunch of detail like a tapered ball nose would. Uh, tapered ball nose, let's see if I can find it in my directory real quick. So I would have to go under my pictures of CNC router bits and as I put all my router bits together and get them on my website and out there because I sell router bits. I sell like a set of router bits that you know what to do with because I give you the feeds and speeds table and I got a bunch of videos that actually tells you how to use them. If you're interested in router bits, click the link down below in the description. If you're brand new to CNC and don't know what router bits you need, it'll be down there. Okay, so where are my pictures? Uh, router bits. What was I going to do? I was going to show you a picture of a tapered ball nose. So let's see if we can find my image of a tapered ball nose that I have in here somewhere. I think I've got one right here. I do. So we're going to open that one up. My computer is slow right now because I'm uploading a program. So that's a tapered ball nose. We are going to brighten it up a little bit. Tapered ball nose does a very fine detail type of work. And, in fact, I am getting ready to source that now. Well, actually, I got them coming to me. So they will be up for sale very shortly at a decent price. <laughs> I'm not going to rake you over the coals like a lot of the uh, big guys do. Okay, I tried to brighten that up, and my computer is just not catching up. There we go. That's a tapered ball nose. Mean-looking bit but does amazingly fine detail. And this is the exact bit that I am sourcing. It's a one millimeter tip, but it is a quarter inch shank. Okay, let's get back to your picture, my friend. And where is it? Okay, so that's what the ball nose does. It does rounded type of features. Then you have the flat bottom end mills. Now these, this is considered an upcut. This picture needs to flip over for a second. So I'm going to rotate it. There we go. And we are going to zoom in. That's how it's sitting in your router. This is an upcut. So what it's going to do is as you're making your cut, the chips are going to go up and out. They'll be ejected out of the project. The downfall with the upcut bits is they tend to tear the edges that they're cutting. So down. that's why people like down cuts. Okay, that's the ball nose. This is a flat bottom end mill. They're both considered end mills. 
There's a ball nose is a ball nose and a flat bottom is a flat bottom. So this will go back and forth and cut out the material flat at the bottom of your project. So if you're pocketing out something, carving out around letters, that's what you would use here. This also is an up bit. Now you've got some other very fine bits here and we're going to discuss these briefly. They looks like you have the same, almost the same set of bits. But you notice that these are like serrated, very rough surfaces. So I don't know if these are compression. A compression bit has an up cut and a down cut combined. But to me, from my machining experience, this almost looks like a roughing bit. Now, a roughing bit is something that hogs out material it doesn't leave a good finish and i don't expect that these will leave good finishes so these may be for like aluminum or something like that but none of these look clean you have a very fine bit here which you can do some amazingly fine detail with so yeah these are all flat bottom bits now these are the blue coating that's supposed to be ultra high life like light dur durable coating uh it's the thing with coating is it leaves uh it, it's intended to like be what's the word uh s smooth and it doesn't allow the heat to get through the coating as fast i personally don't find coating to be a big change or improvement um but it is what it is. So that's supposed to be like the ultra long life coating. And the, the these here is a different kind of coating. They usually put this gold coating on high speed steel bits. I'm going to guess that these bits are carbide, which is good. And I'm going to guess that these are carbide. I'm going to guess these are carbide as well. Carbide steel. So it's tungsten carbide. It's, it's a grade of steel that... It's very durable. It has a lot of tolerance to heat. And um, that's about it. Uh, this, I'm going to guess, is high-speed steel. So, basically, I need your help to tell Alan what the heck these gouging-looking bits are for. Because I can't see them leaving a nice surface. All right, so this is Garrett. Give me a thumbs up and a comment down below. Help us out. Let's get an explanation as to why these are included in the SandSmart kit. And that'll help all the SandSmart people who buy that machine and get this bit kit. No way they have them. All right, this is Garrett. Looking forward to your comments. Give me a thumbs up. I'll talk to you later.